The NCA, thank you for staying with us. Now, South Africans who have recovered from COVID-19 are donating their blood to help others fight off the disease. At least 30 survivors have registered to donate through the SA National Blood Service. And blood from COVID-19 survivors can be a rich source of antibodies. But joining me now to give more clarity this via Skype is SCNBS Mayo Medical a Scientist Marion Vermeulen joins me now. Marion, thank you so much uh, for your time in joining us. I mean, what would the process then look like after the 30 uh, survivors or those who've recovered then donate their blood? Uh, so the, 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 the process starts off, we first have to um, contact them, um, so they register onto the website that they are interested in the study and then one of our research nurses will contact them to find out and do a preliminary screening first to find out whether they meet the criteria. Um, to be able to donate convalescent plasma. So this really means that they have to have had COVID-19 in the past, have been symptom-free for 28 days, and then also um, be between the ages of 18 and 65, weigh at least 55 kilograms, um, and preferably be male, and if female, not have been pregnant before. Mm. They meet all of those criteria, then we set up an appointment for them to come and, and donate blood, um, and, they, and they donate the plasma part of the blood. So we give back the red cells. And then the plasma part, the plasma component is where your antibodies um, lie. So, or, or where, they, where they're kept, oh dear. So um, when, um, when a person has recovered from the illness, they, they have developed antibodies that help in, in, um, in sorry about that, in treating the, um, in treating the um, in treating the illness the virus and so those antibodies can be passively transfused through the transfusion um, to the to the recipient um, who is now currently ill and then that helps the recipient be able to um, get better quicker and hopefully have a milder disease as well um, so that plasma we will then store for now while we are in the um, stages of setting up our second protocol, which is a protocol where we will be giving this convalescent plasma to a treatment arm and a control arm. Um, and the treatment arm will get the, the plasma and the control arm a placebo. Uh, so we can see whether this treatment actually does work and is effective in treating COVID-19. And if it is effective, it will be, as it stands at the moment, the only um, proven therapy for, for COVID-19. Yeah. So, um, Mary, I just want to get clarity on this as well. When you talk about the plasma, of course, helping uh, patients, is it particularly for patients with mild to severe uh, you know, COVID-19, or even if perhaps you are asymptomatic, uh, can you still receive the plasma for help? So um, there's a number of protocols internationally that are being done, and some are being done for um, uh, so some are being done for people who are, are asymptomatic. Uh, some are being actually used as prophylactic. So in fact, it's being provided for healthcare workers and, um, and people who are on the front line to try and actually give them this passive immunization. We've decided in South Africa for now that our, our um, protocol is to be giving it to patients who have got moderate or severe um, but not critically ill um, COVID-19. And the hopes are here that those people who have got, mo particularly those who have got moderate illness, that they will then not develop any kind of severe illness. So that's, our, that's the, the, the group of participants that we would like to, or patients that we would like to um, treat in this clinical trial. So, so then how soon can, you know, this uh, process of survivors donating blood begin in South Africa? So, that, so we've got two protocols. The first protocol is to collect, uh, to enrol um, donors, collect the uh, plasma, test the plasma, and to test the pla test and process the plasma. And then the second protocol is to start the treatment. So the first protocol has been um, has been approved, and um, and so we have started already. We started last week already. In fact, we've got three donors that have already um, provided their pretest samples. We have another four donors this week um, that are providing um, pretest samples and then they will start actually giving um, donating their, their, their plasma. The patient side, that protocol is in the final stages of development. We're hoping to get um, human research ethics um, committee approval for that protocol uh, in the next week or two and then we will send it to SAPRA 
where it will then be um, hopefully approved and we would like to start around about the middle of June um, providing patients with um, with the treatment. Right. And I mean, the, this news or rather this conversation could set uh, some South Africans quite optimistic and excited. Uh, but so that we are quite objective and also responsible in our conversation, are you also saying that there's no proven vaccine or um, sort of like, you know, cure yet? This is still a trial that has to go on in South Africa. Absolutely. So it is. It's very much. Uh, it's unproven at this point, and that is why we are only we are only advocating to provide this through a clinical trial, um, because we want to first make sure that it does in fact work. And it's only through a clinical trial that has a treatment arm and a control arm that you can determine whether something something does work properly, and also measure any adverse events as well at the same time. So um, it will be a clinical trial until we can see the efficacy and that it does work. And once that is, uh, once we can determine that, then we could, and, and, and it does work, then we can provide that as a as a, as a treatment to to all patients all right, if we have enough plasma. Well, thank you so much for this conversation, Marin Vermeulen. That's the uh, biomedical scientist from the South African National Blood Services.